Hi, good day. I'm Alian and I will be presenting the continuation of Chapter 15, Managing International Information System. Herewith, we are able to discuss how different international business strategies might support information system and able to outline issues brought by global information systems and offering potential solutions to them. So let's proceed then. Many successful companies have created organizational system structures. The success of these companies depends not only on how efficiently their operations run, but also um, on an essential element which is a management team that is able to weigh the benefits and drawbacks of global systems and develop strategies for reducing the risk. Presented are the primary management issues caused by evolving global systems. First is agreeing on common user requirements. Second, introducing changes in business processes. Third, coordinating applications development. Fourth, coordinating software releases. And lastly, encouraging local users to support global systems. Um, it's, it's interesting to note that these issues are also represent the main challenges manager faces um, while creating typical home systems. However, in a global settings, they are indeed extremely complex. So how can these um, difficulties can be handled? Identification of core systems that involves the identifi identification of crucial core business processes, which refers to the identifications of center of excellences and the ranking of these centers is the first stage in a managing a worldwide shift. And after that, you can choose which operations should be local and regional, and which should be core up, which should be core applications that are globally coordinated, created, and deployed. The second strategic stage is to take control of the fundamental systems and establish them um, truly as global. The third step um, is to decide on a strategy for implementing and managing change. Um, avoiding big picture or piecemeal strategies that try to implement everything at once. With a precise and clear vision of the international capabilities, the organization should have in five years evolved existing applications into a multinational ones. Let's proceed to the implementation of the management solution to those challenges in developing global systems. On the issue of agreeing on con common user requirements, a rational comparison process between the numerous divisions of the company will be sparked by creating a concise list of the core business processes and core support system. This process will also help to create a common language for discussing the business and will inhibit inevitably result in an understanding of common elements as well as the distinctive qualities that must remain local. Next issue is the introducing changes in business processes. Your credibility, influence, and capacity to involve users in the change of design process will all be the key factors in your success as a change agent. The acceptance of your authority as a result of your ability, foresight, or other traits are, is referred to as leg legitimacy. In order to persuade others that change is both possible and desirable, um, you should choose a viable, viable change approach, which have defined as evolutionary yet with a vision. An important strategy is to involve um, people in change and reassure them that it is for the benefit of the business and for their local units. The choice of change strategy is crucial for the issue of coordinating application development. Globally, there is too much complexity to try to implement a grand design strategy of transformation. Making tiny gradual progress toward a great aim makes it much easier to coordinate change. Consider a 5-year action plan as opposed to a 2-year action plan and to cut down on coordination expenses will keep the number of information system to a bare minimum. Next in the issue is the issue of coordinating software releases. Businesses can put systems in place to make sure that all operating units 
update to a new software at once, ensuring that everyone's software is compatible. The solution to the issue of encouraging local users to support global systems is to, is to incorporate consumers in the design process without ceding final decision-making authority to narrow interest. Um, in a multinational corporation, co-optation is the general strategy for handling local units that are recalcitrant. Co-optation is described as um, in include the opposition in the process of developing and putting into practice the solution while retaining the control over the scope and character of the change. However, in order to persuade or to prove that transnational systems of some kind are actually necessary, it may be essential for the local units to agree on a limited number of global systems. So, how this co-optation be carried out? There are several options available. One option is to give each country unit the chance to create one, trans one transnational application initially in its own and subsequently globally. In this way, um, local units um, take an active role in the development of a global system and each major country um, systems, systems groups receive a share of the activity. The drawback of this, um, however, is that it implies that high-quality system development is generally available and that, for instance, um, a German team can only successfully install systems in France and Italy. However, it won't always be like that. Um, establishing additional interna international centers of excellence or a single center of excellence is a second strategy. There could be a number of centers around the world that concentrate on a particular business operations. These centers are founded on multinational systems or multinational teams, significantly rely on local national units and are accountable to global management. Centers of excellence complete all the science and testing, testing tasks as well as the initial identification and specification of these processes. Whereas, information needs definition, business, and system analysis. However, pilot testing and implementation are expanded to other regions of the world. The message that all key groups are participating in the design and will have an influence is strengthened by enlisting a wide range of local organizations in an international centers of excellence. Technology difficulties can still cause problems, even with the right organizational structure and managerial decisions. The final step in creating international or global information system designs is choosing technological platforms, networks, hardware, and software. It is essential that the senior management at the headquarters and overseas division managers fully comprehend the advantages that will accrue to both company and specific units from this outset. Our next topic will be the technology issues and opportunities for global value chains. Um, finding a solution to, a, to standardize a worldwide computing platform in the face of such wide operating units and national variations um, is one of the biggest challenges. Finding specialized, specialized software programs that are user-friendly and actually increase the efficiency of global work teams is also a significant difficulty. Worldwide adoption of the internet has significantly, significantly lowered networking issues. But because not all, the, not all business units use the same applications and because internet service quality can vary greatly, much like the telephone services, um, the sheer existence of the internet that does not ensure the information will flow um, effortlessly um, throughout the worldwide corporation. For instance, German business units may share documents and interact using an open source collaboration technology. However, that is not in or that is incompatible with American headquarters employees who utilize Lotus Notes. 
global systems connect connectivity and integrations are necessary for overcoming these obstacles. Moving on, the computing platforms and systems integration. Um, the creation of a multinational or global information systems architecture based on the idea of core systems raises concerns about how these new core systems will integrate with the current collection of applications created globally by various departments, individuals, and computing hardware. To support digital business activities that cross international borders, um, it is important to create global, distributed, and interconnected systems. These are, in a nutshell, um, the same issues that any sizable domestic systems development initiative faces. Um, these issues, though, are exacerbated in a global setting. Just consider the difficulty of integrating systems based on Windows, Windows, Linux, Unix, or proprietary operating systems on the hardware from IBM, Sun, HP, and other manuf manufacturers in a several operating units across numerous nations. So additionally, um, integration is not guaranteed even if all sites make use of the same operating system and hardware. Data standards and other technical standards that sites must adhere to must be established by some central authority within the company. For instance, um, standardization of acceptable, acceptable system interfaces, communication speeds and architectures, network software, and techno technical accounting terms such as the start and end of the fiscal year. Um, next is about connectivity. Cost and tariffs, network management, installation delays, subpar foreign services, legislative um, legislative restrictions, shifting user needs, inconsistent standards, and network capacity are all issues. Companies offer global connectivity by constructing their own global private networks um, using exclusive standards or by utilizing internet technologies. However, many nations lack the necessary communications, in communications infrastructure for wide, widespread internet um, usage and others must contend with exorbitant pricing, um, good governmental restrictions, or government surveillance. Connectivity or the capacity to, the con to connect the systems and personnel of a global company into a single integrated network that can transmit voice, data, and images is a pre prerequisite for truly integrated global systems. The internet has created an incredibly um, strong platform for connecting the scattered parts of international corporations. But there are, still, there are still many problems. Even in the United States, no degree of service is promised by the public internet. Few multinational organizations have confidence in, confidence in, the, in the security of the internet. Thus, they typically communicate critical data over private networks and use of internet virtual private networks or what we know as VPNs for conversations requiring less protection. Not all nations support even the most basic kind of internet usage or access, which calls for securing dependable circuits, circuits coordinating efforts um, between various carriers and the local telecoms authority and securing agreements that are uniform in terms of the quality of telecommunications um, service offered. Many four nations have limited access to internet connectivity to the, due to the high PC costs and low incomes. When internet infrastructure does exist in a less developed nations, it frequently has insufficient bandwidth capacity and is unreliable in part because of problems with the power system. Access to internet services is extremely expensive in local currencies due to the low, um, low purchasing power of the majority of the people in underdeveloped nations. Many nations also keep an eye on communications. China, Singapore, Iran, and Saudi, Saudi Arabian government all keep an eye on internet traffic and in restrict access to websites that they deem to be morally or politically harmful. 
In contrast, the rise of the internet population is much more rapid in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East than in North America and Europe, where it is barely expanding at all. As a result, internet connectivity will be much more accessible and dependable in underdeveloped areas of the world in the future, and it will be crucial in integrating local economies with the global economy. As we move ahead, application software has particular difficulties when core systems develop because of how legacy, legacy systems will interact with the new. If old systems are preserved locally, which is typical, um, entirely new interfaces must be developed and tested. Um, it can be expensive and difficult to design these interfaces, given those business units are accustomed to their distinct business processes and definitions of data. Another issue when developing new software is making it um, realistically and usable for or usable by numerous business units from various um, locations. In addition to these difficulties integrating new and outdated um, systems, there are issues with systems functionality and human interface design. The best options for this is or are graphical user interfaces, but they require a shared language, frequently English. Um, English may be taken as the accepted international standard in systems involving only knowledge workers internationally, although a common language may not always be assumed as global systems become more pervasive among management and administrative groups. Human interfaces must be developed to support many languages and even norms. The entire process of altering software so that it can operate in a second, one, second language is referred to as a software localization. Then, what software um, programs are the most essential? Basic transaction and management reporting systems are the main emphasis of many global systems. Businesses are increasingly relying on enterprise systems and supply chain management to, synchron to synchronize their worldwide um, supply chains and to standardize their business processes. These cross-functional systems, however, are not necessarily compatible with the various linguistic, cultural, and business practices found in different nations. Trying to manage the technical complexity of enterprise systems can be challenging for business units in less technologically advanced nations. Manufacturing and distribution companies frequently utilize supply, supply um, chain management and electronic data interchange or what we know as EBI technologies to communicate with global suppliers. Um, for knowledge and database businesses like advertising agencies, research-based companies in medicine and engineering, and graphics and publishing um, businesses, the collaboration platforms, email and video conferencing are particularly crucial global collaboration tools. These tools from the internet will be used for these reasons more and more. Now, I'd like to share about the global teams who are being used more and more by domestic and international businesses to manage their hardware and software resources. Many businesses increasingly use um, offshore software outsourcing to contract with external vendors in other nations for some of the work involved in developing uh, new systems or maintaining the current ones. Any businesses that outsources its applications must have a complete understanding of the process or the project, including its needs, implementation strategy, expected benefits, cost factors, and performance measures. Although offshore outsourcing lowers software development expenses, businesses won't actually save as much as money they initially believe. Um, the total cost of ownership of software um, built offshore um, is frequently increased by more than 50% as a result of hidden costs associated with offshore outsourcing. Outsourcing of software to other countries may be advantageous for some businesses 
but its effect on society as a whole are less obvious. Outsourcing software work may also result um, in, employers, in employers laying off their own staff members or workers from the demo, demo, domestic software industry. And that brings us to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. To God be all the glory.